All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Tulsi Gabbard is the focus of this channel as we try to elect Tulsi Gabbard for president, you and I and everybody else. So uh, if you've come over here to watch these videos, get activated. Um, best thing you can do right now is donate to Tulsi. Uh, and if you haven't done so, she needs your support. Um, please help her out so she can get into the debates. And once she does get into the debates, then I think we need to all come back and maybe donate a few more bucks to just get her campaign really off the ground. Uh, it's a little discouraging. I, I know Andrew Yang is a very interesting guy in this race, and I like him. I do like him. Um, but he's already there. He's got the donations. So we need to keep pressing people. Uh, I see Tulsi's name out there. Hey, Jimmy Dore, keep talking about Tulsi Gabbard, but um, keep talking about how she needs to get into these debates and that, uh, you know, all of his 500,000 subscribers, if um, a small percentage of those subscribers gave a buck, uh, I think Tulsi would be in. Uh, we need to see this. Just, I mean, just imagine Tulsi Gabbard going up against all of these establishment losers and just wiping the floor with them. I'm just, I'm just being honest. It would be a, a wonderful thing to see. Um, I do want to talk about the blackout. Yeah, let's. We got to talk about the blackout because, um, no, not the blackout in Venezuela. Although um, <laughs> that's an interesting topic, um, since uh, cyber terrorism is something that probably could have come from our own CIA. Uh, could have um, certainly a, a plausible thing. But no, I want to talk about the media blackout, which really began the day Tulsi Gabbard announced. And by the way, it's it's subtle. It's a different kind of a blackout. It's like blackballing and blacking out. Um, the blackballing, like if you watched any of the exchanges, say Tulsi Gabbard on The View, Tulsi Gabbard on Stephen Colbert, um, Tulsi Gabbard on Morning Joe. That one was probably uh, the worst of all of them. Just just an amazing display. And it shows you, I'm not even sure what Morning Joe is. I mean, I remember Morning Joe, I thought at the beginning, was really pro-Donald Trump. And then he did something, and then they flipped out, and then they weren't for him anymore, and now he's, you know, a despicable human being. But uh, what is it, Donnie Deutsch or whatever the guy's name is? He's basically saying he'd vote for Trump over Bernie. Uh, he's lecturing the world about socialism and so forth, even though he's got more money than, I don't know, 250 millionaires or something like that. Uh, Jimmy Dore did a thing on it, and it was kind of funny. You could buy $200 million houses and still have $50 million left over. Um, <laughs> that's just incomprehensible. Um, but the blackout, the Tulsi blackout, it, it's a combination of things. Like CNN has this leaderboard, uh, activity board, you know, um, power rankings. And as far as, you know, internet searches and curiosity and things like that into a candidacy, Tulsi Gabbard was number four. Okay. I think Bernie was number one, uh, but Tulsi was number four. And they just glossed over it. They pretended she wasn't even on the board. And every time she's like at a town hall, and it's not like she gives incomplete answers. She gives great answers to the initial question. And then they follow up and they hit her again because, you know, they have to make sure that even though she got through the answer completely unscathed, in fact, typically the audience is on her side, like Colbert, completely on her side, you know? Was the Iraq war worth it? No. Quick, succinct answer, you know? Um, are you for Medicare for all? Yes. Yay, and people clap. And, you know, I'm not 100% sure I'm for uh, Medicare for all, but here's what I do know. I do know I like politicians that give direct answers to questions. And... All of these other uh, uh, politicians, I'm trying to think, was it Amy Klobuchar? Is that how you say her name? Um, Jimmy Dore played a clip of her all over the map. 
just trying to answer this kid's question about college tuition and free college. Um, you know, here's the thing about free college. Again, I would make some kind of public university in state free. And then it's kind of like you're going to high school. You know what I mean? I mean, the state pays for the high school. It pays for the junior high. Um, I mean, if you want to go to an elite college and all that stuff, which I think is a waste of money anyway, because the education, the value of that education doesn't seem to be uh, worth the outlay in cash right now because they're teaching majors that are worthless and we need to re-examine the kind of education that kids are getting these days. Um, but if a kid wants free college, the state university system, I would think, would be free because it's like a high school. You know, you went to high school for four years. Uh, if you graduate and you do well and you get in, you know, maybe you build a few more um, state universities. Uh, but, you know, your tax dollars are already paying for all of that education. You know, I, I mean, I can't understand why you wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, I probably wouldn't be for, you know, transferring that to like, if you live in Massachusetts, I don't think, you know, you should be going to school in California for free and then all of the other expenses added to it. I think you need to do it and you need just to be cost effective with it. But, you know, if you and that's the other thing too. college is made into this holy grail today. These are my opinions. These aren't uh, the opinions of Tulsi Gabbard. I'm just interjecting got my kind of center right perspective on it. Um, I don't have a problem because here's the thing. If the college is ripping you off to begin with and they know they can uh, get you with these giant student loans, it's like a credit card company. It's the same thing. They're going to give you a credit card for like a $20,000 limit. You're going to get it. You're going to spend it because you're not disciplined. And then they got you for 20 grand that you owe them, you know, and then they tack on the interest and so forth. Um, one thing, usually after seven years, credit card company writes that off. That's why they charge so much interest because they know they're going to get some folks that can't pay it. Um, but with the colleges, it sticks with you forever. And I hear that was um, some crazy legislation that was lobbied hard for as far as bankruptcy that you can't declare a bankruptcy if it's a college student loan debt. Imagine that. Some white collar dude can declare bankruptcy, but some poor kid, 22, 23 years old, with all this debt, and then he's saddled. Some of these people are saddled with debt for 30 or 40 years. So uh, anyway, I do have a lot of empathy for um, this issue. But the blackout continues on Tulsi because she talks about that. She talks about Medicare for all. But the big issue where she really gets blacked out on is the fact that she is not for the regime change stuff. She's not for endless wars. Uh, she's military. So all of these, all of these um, commentators that keep hitting her with, uh, well, you know, do you understand the foreign policy nuance here? Do you know about Assad and the way he gassed his own people and so forth and and Tulsi's awesome on this because she, when she met with Assad and, and they automatically think that, well, she shouldn't have met with Assad. That was, he's a heartless, cruel dictator and, you know, how could she have met with him? How? Because she wants peace and she wants to understand where he's coming from so she can make an assessment on whether he um, kills his own people in these attacks and so forth or if this is another false flag to give America the green light so we can, you know, launch missiles that Brian Williams can admire and, uh, you know, read some old poetry to. You know, it's, uh, we're living in really weird times where people don't see the danger of us doing this and the fact that we just keep doing it, no matter who the president is, we just keep doing it. Trump was no interventions, don't want to do it. Um, at every Trump rally, people were like, yeah, man, that's good. All the people there were in agreement. Nobody was sitting there being a neocon. In fact, all the neocons, all the never Trump people hated Trump because he was saying stuff like that. 
Um, they weren't just not liking Trump because, you know, he was uncouth or, you know, brash or, you know, the way he talks and so forth. That was a little portion of it. And the fact that, you know, he had a bit of a checkered past as a, as a human being. But the main issue is his insistence on not getting us involved in these regime change wars. And guess where he is now? Like I keep saying, I don't know when it happened. A few weeks back, he just let go of the steering wheel. I'm done. You, know, you could tell he was kind of trying to pull the wheel back from like all the Syria people. And, you know, the troop levels are going down over there. But the generals are now saying, oh, no, we're leaving a thousand people in there. They're contradicting. They're literally contradicting what Donald Trump is saying. You need a Tulsi Gabbard to get up, to you to call a press conference, to use the bully pulpit and say, nope, I said we're pulling out of Syria, we're pulling out of Syria. Do you hear that, generals? We're pulling out. You know, that's the kind of mentality that you need in the White House. That's why I think Tulsi is a stronger candidate than Bernie Sanders. We shall see where this goes, but my money and my resources are all going toward Tulsi Gabbard. Regardless of the media blackout, we just have to keep on pushing to get her message out there. And channels like this one are going to counter the fake news media narrative that, you know, Kamala Harris is the best, or Beto O'Rourke. Lord help us, Beto O'Rourke is the guy. All right. I might just quit politics if Beto O'Rourke gets the nomination or I'll go hard third party. I don't even agree with like 80% of what the Green Party probably stands for. But then the anti-war stuff I agree with so strongly that I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll have a little green t-shirt on. For me, it'll be a big t-shirt. But anyway, I'll be back soon. See you then.